Hey students, it's Mr. Matthews, and today we are talking about fountain pens. Um, you should all have one, and it should look something like this, and it'll have something like that, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, I'm gonna go over a couple other pens you may have in your house already, and so you can see what they do. Uh, this is a ballpoint pen. If you can see right here at the end, it has a ball. And when you take that ball and roll it onto the paper, it will draw and it allows ink by transferring just a little bit of ink onto that ball, and then as it rolls, it transfers ink onto the next part of the ball, and so on and so on and so on. It allows you to draw. The next type of pen is a felt tip pen, and that is like your Sharpie, and it has just a piece of felt right there as the nib, and it allows by ink to flow down the barrel into that piece of felt, and then that felt allows you to write and draw uh, with that pen. But today we are going to be talking about something that uh, kind of can be kind of scary to some students, but a fountain pen. A fountain pen. And we were going to learn how to use it, okay? All right, students, so you should have your fountain pen. Uh, it could be a cheaper one like this one, or it could be an expensive one like this one. It doesn't matter. Uh, but we're going to talk about it. And so a fountain pen always comes with a cap. The cap needs to be put on your fountain pen securely you usually can hear a click, uh, knowing that it is securely fastened to the barrel of your pen. Um, that way, ink won't bleed out. Uh, that way, it keeps your ink from drying out, and then you can use it every time. Uh, a lot of our problems in the classroom is if someone leaves it, and they're like, oh, it's on, but it doesn't actually click. It's just like pressed on, and it doesn't actually click, it will just sort of dry out slowly and we don't want that to happen and you don't want that to happen so every time you do it make sure you hear that click that you know it is put on so this one same thing just a little click um, there are fancier ones that screw together and if you have one of those just make sure they're screwed tight so that your ink's not drying out or spilling anywhere all right um, let's talk about the mechanics of a fountain pen so you have your cap, you want that on at the end, but when you're using it, you want to take it off. And all fountain pens are designed that the cap goes on the back end of the pen. And that's where you want it to be there. You want it to be there. You don't want to be on the desk next to it. You want it to be on the end of the barrel. This is called posting. You post the cap onto the back of the barrel. The barrel is this long part right here that holds your ink. So this is the barrel, and what we're gonna tell you is take the cap and put it on the back of the barrel, posting it. Now what I like to do, this part right here, the clip, is I like to put it in line with uh, my nib. And so I have this nib, and this is the confusing part for a lot of people, is this nib. And so it's metal and it's shiny and it looks kind of sharp and it kind of throws people off, but it's nothing to be afraid of. And so what I like to do is take this nib and see this shiny part here? I like to take this cap and twist it so it's in line with it so that I know that it's almost like a straight line and then that's my upside, okay? And then when you hold a fountain pen, you want to hold it sort of higher up. Normally people like choke up on it and get really low. What we're gonna do is hold it right here on this one, right in this area. This is called the grip section. And we're gonna use a three finger. So you have your thumb on one side, you have your pointer finger on the top, and you have your middle finger below resting on it. And the idea with a fountain pen is not to hold tight. It is to have a loose grip and that is controlling. And so this allows us to have, be able to move the pen up and down and side to side and twist it if we need to without having to like really strain our hand. Fountain pen is supposed to, uh, use is supposed to be enjoyable. It's supposed to be loose. It's supposed to be like flowy. And so we wanna be able to do that with our hand too. Now, if you see up here on my hand, I am resting, I am resting this pen into the socket of my hand there. And so I have my grip, I have my thumb on one side, I have my pinky or my pointer finger on the top, my middle finger below, my other fingers are kind of loose to do whatever they want. But the part right here is resting. It's resting right here on my hand. And this is important, it's giving us four points of contact so we can really control it. 
And when we write, we're not just writing with our wrists, we're sort of writing with our whole arm. So we need to sit up straight, uh, have a hard surface to write on, and I think we're getting really close. We're getting really close. Um, today, what I want you to do is grab your sketchbook, since you know those things, and we are going to turn past all our notes, all these notes to page 19, and we're gonna create a cheat sheet uh, on this fountain pen. So I'd like you to follow along with me so that you know what to do, and uh, we can know the fountain pen a little bit better and get more comfortable with it so we can use it in our everyday artistic practice. All right, I'm on page 19. I have my fountain pen. It's got the cap on it, it's posted. I have it in line, the clip with the nib, so I am ready to hold it with one thumb on one side, my pointer finger on top, and my middle finger below. And what I'm gonna do is a lot of people like to write side by side, so I'm gonna use this post-it note. And so they like to write, let's say with a ballpoint pen, it is your hand right above it, you see that? And then you write like, uh, hi mom, and you go from side to side, right? What I'm going to do is, with this fountain pen, adjust that. And so no longer am I gonna write side to side, because if I do that, I might smear my ink. I'm gonna write underneath. And so you see my pen is underneath, and it says H-I-M-O-M. -M. Hi, Mom. And so the whole time, I can see where I'm going. And this is called underwriting. Underwriting, I think, is very important for uh, fountain pen use, especially if you're left-handed, because there's a tendency to smudge. Because this ink, if I do this again, let me do it sideways. Hi, mom. This ink is wet. And if you were a left-handed person, it would smear it. So if I was left-handed, I'm not left-handed. So if I was trying to be left-handed, I might write, hey, and I was doing side writing. Oh, this is tough, I'm not left-handed. Oh boy, it's so bad. And it might smear. And so if you want to stop smearing, I would test and write underneath it. So, hi, mom. Underwriting is the way to go. You can do overwriting, but then your wrist cramps and you have a tendency to get arthritis a lot quicker. This is just really easy. Uh, it's a great way to do your drawings as well. And so as I'm writing things, I'm gonna write them underneath here, okay? So I'm gonna imagine there's a line here. I'm gonna keep my hand underneath the line as I write. And so what I'm gonna write up here is, oh, something I should tell you before we start that, is that you need to hold the pen at a 45 degree angle, okay? It should rest in your hand. If you have it, the post or the cap and you're resting in your hand right here and your fingers uh, lined up this way, it should automatically give you a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle. So if the paper's here, you want it to be about there, okay? So if I'm writing under underwriting, so I might be different, so I might go a little bit slower. Found pen, pen, cheat, sheet. Ta-da, we did it. Now, what we need to do is uh, draw a diagram of our pen, okay? Um, we're just gonna do a general one. We don't actually have to do the pen we are looking at, uh, but we're gonna draw a diagram. And so I'm gonna draw a pen going sideways here, and I'd like you to do the same. I am going to start with the nib over here. I'm gonna just put two dots, okay? And from the nib, and like this is sort of blown up, and so I might make this a little bit bigger. I am going to put two lines that go out at an angle, and then they're gonna slightly come back, and that's gonna create our nib, okay? Then in here, we're going to draw two parallel lines that sort of meet with a circle, and that is our nib. So I'm gonna write nib, N-I-B, nib. Then, there is sort of like a collar or a section. Uh, mine is right here. This is the grip section. And so I'm just going to make sort of like a rectangle and write grip, G-R-I-P, section, S-E-X, or C, T-I-O-N, T-I-O-N, section. Now there's this big area right here and 
Sometimes that gets a little bit bigger, thicker, depending on what kind of pin you have, but it's a little bit longer. And this section is called the barrel. B-A-R-R-E-L, barrel. And then you have your cap. And this is a little bit wider and it goes down and sort of curves sometimes. So that's gonna be our cap, C-A-P. And then we are going to put in our clip. Our clip is the thing that holds it onto your shirt if you were wearing a shirt or in your pant pocket so it doesn't fall down. And so that's gonna be your clip. Okay. So that is the basic setup of a um, fountain pen. But if we really wanna know how it works, we're gonna to have to zoom in a little bit, especially to this section, okay? And for this next part, I'm gonna draw the fountain pen at an angle on the side, on the side, okay? So my nib is no longer gonna be necessarily triangular in shape. It's gonna be sort of straight, okay? And I'm gonna blow it up a little bit, make it bigger. I'm gonna make the circle area, the tip of the thing, a little bit bigger. And then I'm just gonna sort of put a parallel line there. It's sort of a tapering. It gets sort of thinner over here and connects to this little round dot and then gets a little bit wider over here. Then I'm gonna put in sort of like a trapezoid section right there. And then the collar area right here, I'm going to just make a rectangle, okay? And so this is the side of our pen, the side of our pen. And I'm gonna label some stuff, okay? So this is still the nib, N-I-B, the nib. And then under here, that little sort of rectangle, sort of triangular thing right here, this black area, that is gonna be our feed. That is what is feeding ink into our nib. And so it's sort of right here, feeds out into here, and then we'll go into what that hole is in a second. Um, with this feeder, oh, I didn't make it long enough. Okay, there I go. That's better. With this feeder, there's a tube that goes through the center of the grip section. And that, I don't know if you know this or not, and I'm just gonna color it in black or solid, is called the feeder tube. Or feed tube. And that takes the barrel ink and takes it to the nib. Now to move this through, we have these little lines and you can see them on mine, these little lines there. And they go all the way around. And so I just draw them all the way through. You can go on the side like that, or you can go all the way through. And these are called the collector, C-O-L-L-E-C-T-O-R, collector. And so there is the nib from the side. So we have the nib, the grip section, the barrel, the cap, the clip. We have the nib, the feed, the collector, and the feed tube. Now we're gonna need to look at just the nib. And so we have all these and we're gonna learn how this works now, okay? Or the parts of it. And so if we're looking at that, and I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. So I have my dots right there. I have two lines that are going down the center, right? And then they have that circle and then you can tell most of the time the shoulder or those edges are gonna be right next to where that hole is. So if I go out here, I can put a line and draw a line right there, or dot, sorry, go dot here, draw a line out there, and I should be able to get what that looks a little bit better, okay? And that'll give me that, uh, edges of my thing. So let's label these parts. These right here, are called the shoulders. So that's a shoulder, that's a shoulder. Just like your shoulders, they're on the edge, all right? The widest side of your nib, okay? Then that circle thing right here, I'm gonna write it here, is the breather hole. And so this allows oxygen to get in and flow, air to flow, the ink down the slit. And that's the next one, is slit, S-L-I-T. And that is right 
here. It's that gap between, and I can't show it to you really well. Let me see if I can grab this. It's that tiny little line right there. And that line moves, if this is my the slit, it moves out and in, and that breather hole allows uh, ink to flow. All right, and then these two dots here at the end of your pen is called the tipping material. T-I-P-P-I-N-G material. Okay, and then these two sides are called the tines. T-I-N-E-S, tines. And you have one on each side and they're flexible and they move, okay? And so this is the basic makeup of a fountain pen. Each fountain pen has the same things. That's how they're made. Um, I brought this one along so you can see inside the barrel. So if I unscrew this, inside is a cartridge for this one. Um, otherwise a tank. That is sort of the same thing with this pen, except for this is a disposable fountain pen. And so the whole thing, this whole thing is a barrel full of ink. So if you broke it, it would spill ink everywhere. And you probably don't want to do that. But most uh, pens come with a cartridge that you can pull out and change if you have a fancy pen and get different colored ink. So I'm using blue in this one. I could get red, I could get green. And all I do is plug it in, make sure it's secure and then screw it together and I'm ready to go. Um, there are some other ones that draw ink up and you have to have a well of ink, uh, but I don't like using those because they're very messy. The cartridges are really easy and they're pretty affordable. All right, so that is the basic makeup of our fountain pen. Um, let's write some notes down about the fountain pen so that we can always remember them. Uh, fountain pens, so fountain pens. Should, that's a U here, should or supposed. How about fountain pens are supposed, supposed ED, um, to be held at a 45 degree a little circle means degree, angle. G-L-E, angle, not angel, angle, okay? And then um, let's talk about the types of strokes you can get with a fountain pen. Uh, so let's go with fountain pen strokes or strokes of a fountain pen. Strokes of a fountain I'm just going to underline it so I know it's sort of like a section. Okay. Um, there are two types of strokes. You have a downstroke. These are the two major ones. And they look like this. Just going from the top to bottom. And depending on how hard you press, so this might be light, light press. Like, or normal. And then this might be a, a heavy press. Oops, there you go. I'm all over the place, E, S, ugh. These notes are a mess. And so heavy press, you're gonna get thicker lines, darker lines, heavy press, okay? And you can sort of see the difference. They're not too much of a difference, but they're slightly. Um, then you have your upstrokes. And to do an upstroke, you sort of have to turn your paper maybe, depending on I turn my paper, or I do an, an angle. Uh, fountain pens are usually all about angles because they're used mostly for cursive writing. And so an upstroke tend to always be lighter. Even if you press heavy, you damage your paper by scratching it. And so usually I just do them light. They're just lighter presses. A 
Let's see if I can write press correctly. P-R-E-S-S, -S, press. All right. Um, then just like our watercolor, you can do a thick, oops, too thin stroke. And so like you can go press really hard and then lighten up your press and then go press really hard or lighten up your press. You can also go down really hard and then lighten up your press. Down really hard, lighten up your press. And so when you're pressing hard, what is actually happening is, imagine these are my tipping, my two fingernails are my tipping material. And then these are my shoulders over here, my pinky knuckles. And then my breather hole is this sort of hole right here that my hand has made. And as I press down on the paper hard enough, it'll open this up and allow more ink to flow. And so every time you press hard, you're allowing more ink to flow. And depending on how light you press, you're just allowing a little bit out. And so you can practice around with this. Um, you can do thick ones to thin ones to thick ones. It's up to you, okay? Um, other ones are loops. You'll see this a lot if you go to a pen store. People love testing out pens with loops. And so this is the most common one you see. It's sort of like a cursive F. You go up and then you loop back around and then down and then you loop around and back up. So back up, down, around. And so this really helps test like the pen in your hand and how it flows. And so you'll see these a lot. So I'm just going up and then I'm coming back around. I'm going down and then I'm going around, back around and then up. And so people will do this a lot, okay? So you might see that. Um, other ones that they do, um, oh, is sort of like hatching. And so I'm just gonna write hatching in here. H-A-T-C-H-I-N-G. I'm just gonna draw a little rectangle here. And so a lot of people use fountain pens to do some hatching. And remember hatching is just lines that are next to each other. And then they just get closer and closer to each other to make it darker. Um, you can see this a lot on money. So you can even add even more in here if you don't feel like it's dark enough. And you can sort of see a value change. Um, they also do cross hatching. So cross hatching. Ugh. And I'll put another rectangle in here. And then cross hatching is just putting in your hatch marks like before. And they get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer as they get to the end, remember? And then what you'll do is just go the opposite way and you can turn your paper if you need to. And then these get closer and 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 closer closer to the end to make a dark value shift. And then the other one is stippling, S-T-I-P-P-L-I-N-G. And fountain pens are really good for adding value. Actually, let's title these value, V-A. L U E. So this is how you create value with a fountain pen. This little section. Let's move this over here. Create this little area. So value stippling is just dots. Right? And as the dots get closer together, if you're holding your pen too tight, you can loosen your grip. I'll help you out. As we get closer together, just tap in the paper, it gets darker, and it creates a value shift, right? Cool. So those are the ones that create value. Um, I'm just going to draw a line over here. And I think the next thing that people do the most with fountain pens is actually write. And so if you are a person and you plan on being a human. Uh, I think writing is fantastic with these uh, just because it's about ease of flow. It's about getting your ideas out. Um, but the only way to get good at this is practicing. And one way to practice at getting better with this is just write out your letters. Just write them out. So I might do capital A, 
and then a lowercase a, and then a capital B, and then a lowercase b, capital C, lowercase c, and then go through all D, and capital E, E, all letters E, F, capital F, lowercase f, G, G, H, I, and this is really good help just to understand how you are going to use your uh, fountain pen. It's just great practice. H I J is next, right? J, and then lowercase J, K, lowercase K, L, lowercase L, M, N, O, P, Q. Oh no, my light. There we go. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y. Oh, come on, Y, Y, and Z, Z. All right, um, once you have that done, uh, try it again um, and fill out one more line of it. And I think we'll have enough uh, notes for today on the fountain pen. Um, but we just want to practice with this, get better. You can do it more and more. Um, I know a lot of graffiti artists uh, practice in their sketchbook writing the letters over and over again. It's just great help for them uh, to get their hand connected with their wrist, with their arm. And so as you're uh, writing these, just, just see how it's flowing for you, okay? Uh, maybe you do all A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. Capital, and then maybe do all under. Uh, let's do all underhand next, or under case. So let me tilt this so you can see it a little bit. Because there's one more thing after this. Um, that I want you to try. So we have all of them next to each other and then separate. And so A, B, C, uh, D, E, F, G, H, I, oh, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and a Z. And then the best thing that I found pins for that I've found is your signature. Um, when I was in sixth grade, I had to come up with a signature because that's the first time I got a bank account. And so it's a great way to do your signature because with the ink and the different thicknesses that you can get out of it, you can make something super unique uh, that is very hard to forge. And so if you're worried about safety and privacy, this is a great way to practice and get something very unique. So um, maybe you've seen the Declaration of Independence. They used uh, feather pens, quills that had a nib on them, and they were able to get very unique handwriting. So um, let's, let's say my name is, ooh, Conrad. So I might, Conrad. Oh, maybe, maybe I can do it better. Maybe Conrad. So write your name. So I might do mine. My first name is Troy. Something like that. Mm, maybe not. Maybe I'll, oh, I like that one a little bit better. Maybe I, something like that. I kind of like my Y's like that. Maybe I do something else like, hmm, if I was a celebrity, how would I want to write my signature? Maybe like that, I don't know. 
So practice in this little space below uh, your signature and what you would like it to be. And then if anybody needs uh, these notes, they are right here. Ah, there they are. And you can press pause at any time on this and copy them down so that you have them in your sketchbook. And then you're gonna upload a picture of these to the Google Classroom assignment uh, today. Thank you.